Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting for uh, Tuesday, June 12th. Uh, for introductions, uh, my name is Todd Wilchin. I am the chair of the county board this year. Um, on my left, uh, fellow commissioner uh, Bill Avery. On my right, fellow commissioners uh, Roma Amundsen and vice chair uh, Jennifer Brinkman. Uh, commissioner Deb Shore will not be joining us this morning. Um, joining us from the county attorney's office is Jen Holloway. Uh, from the county clerk's office, we have the uh, chief deputy, Corey Beatty, and Kelly Lundgren, and Monet McCullen. From the uh, county board office, we have the chief deputy administrative officer, Ann Ames, joining us this morning. Now, if you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, Ms. Beattie, would you please start the agenda? Before we begin, I'd like to announce that a copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk's staff at the front of the hearing room. These materials can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held on Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. Move approval. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the last Board of Commissioners meeting held last Tuesday. Um, any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, please call the roll. Avery. Yes. Brinkman. Abstain. Amundsen. Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries three to zero with one abstention. Item 1B is approval of the minutes of the department budget meeting held on Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the department of budget meetings held last Tuesday. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman. Abstain. Amundsen. Yes. Avery. Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries three to zero with one abstention. Item two is approval of all claims processed through June 12th, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve all claims processed through today. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen. Yes. Avery. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next under special presentations, we have recognition of the County City Building Art Exhibit with Helen Dolan. Come on up, Ms. Dolan. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to bring my art here. This was kind of a surprise for me. And uh, when I entered, I just really wasn't sure exactly what I was entering. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a wonderful surprise. Um, I am Helen Buck Donlan, and I am a transplant to Nebraska from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And when I first moved here, the wide open spaces were a huge departure for me because I grew up with tall trees and not much sky showing and a lot of water and, and great places to play, but you don't see much outside of your own little circle, your own little world there. So Nebraska was a big deal. I started doing um, landscapes about 30 years ago when I started canoeing Nebraska rivers and creeks and taking photographs of what I saw and then I would get pretty excited about wanting to share these and so I worked primarily from photographs and sketches on site and um, and still do so. Um, some of the rivers I've done are the Platte and the Loop River and of course the um, um, Niobrara River. I've done several paintings of that and enjoy that. Um, I probably, I've gotten some local recognition through the years at things like State Fair and local little art exhibitions. And I did work with the Noise Gallery for about a year where I sold quite a bit of work through there, which was very encouraging for me because many times artists who are self-taught, which I am, and work alone, don't get much exposure to their work. They have no idea how it's being received. So. This is a great opportunity for artists everywhere, especially emerging artists. So you're, you guys are doing important work, I think. So I'm really happy to be here. Um, I work in pastels, watercolor, acrylic. 
I would like to learn to work in oil, and I have plans. You know, I want my art to, to evolve and get bigger and better, and and present what I feel when I'm out in this, in this, in these places that I paint. Um, I've attended some workshops. Some of my early influences here in Nebraska were Barry Monahan, who's a pastel landscape artist, and of course Ann Burkholder, um, and uh, Keith Jacob Shagan, whose work just, I mean, you can see the influence in some of these people whose work, and I still admire these people so much, and I just, I also consider that I am still a student of art. I believe any artist is always a student of art. Um, we're always learning. There's so much to learn. I don't know that you could ever learn it all or know it all. So as long as I continue to do this, I'm always learning and I'm eager to share it with other people, not just the end result, but how to do what I do. Young people enjoy learning these things and finding out what they can do and how to express themselves through art. Um, is there, are there any questions or anything <coughs> anybody would like to know about what I do? Could you show us some of your artwork? Oh, yes. <laughs> this is a small piece of a local, um, local Wayuka Cemetery hmm. here in Lincoln, which is a place that I like to go, uh, you know, just to sit and meditate and take sketches and photographs of some of the things that are in the water. And this was a little sketch kind of done to, because it's just such a peaceful place, such a nice place. This one is one of my favorites because of the simplicity, and that's another thing I go for in my work, is keeping it simple, keeping it really simple, and, and so that it's pleasurable for me to do it, and yet I still capture the scene that I'm trying to get and that I'm trying to convey. And it's more about what you feel when you look at it, I think, when you convey it. But I like these really simple guys, and to me, they're the prettiest ones. And um, I would uh, hope to keep doing that. Like I said, I want to learn to do oils and, and, and get better at it, you know, try to get better at it, so. But anyway, I do, um, and thank you so much for pairing me with the artist, um, Charlene Potter, whose ceramics work ties in so well with mine. We're both environmentally conscientious people, and my love of the rivers and nature certainly reflected in her work as well, so. This was a really good opportunity. I'm really grateful to have it, and thanks for having me here. Oh. Any other questions from anybody? Any questions from Stolen? Uh, Commissioner Amundsen? Yeah, I really appreciate you know your art and so forth because it really has captured the characteristics of Nebraska. Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Washington, D.C. Oh, in Washington, D.C.? Well, yes. yeah, this is quite a change it's then. A, it's a completely <clears throat> different yeah. thing, and my first ride to work on the bus in Lincoln, Nebraska at a secretarial job when I was 19 the bus driver said good morning to me, and I was stunned because in Washington, <laughs> D.C., that would not happen. And that's a huge illustration of the difference, and it's still, you still would not have that happen in Washington, D.C. I go back regularly, so that was my welcome to Nebraska, and this has always been one of my favorite places to be, and a lot of that has to do with people here. <laughs> so I hope that comes through in my work, you know. It's a good place to live. Commissioner Avery has a question. That second painting? Yes. I particularly was uh, captured by that. And I wonder, would you tell us where that location is? What river? This is Loop River. I thought it was. <laughs> that's <laughs> great, too, that you, if you look and you, you are drawn to it because that's a familiar place, a familiar scene. Some folks, I had a, a, a show at the Aging Partners facility, and a lady that worked there came through went to one day and said, you know, your work makes people feel good. And I said, well, that's really nice to hear. She said, she said, people come in and they really look, and she said, everybody seems to find something in it that's familiar that makes them feel good. And that's, that show did result in a couple of sales to people who bought pieces that said, I feel like I know this place. You know, so I think that's good. I hope to keep doing that, to keep having people say, you know, what I'm seeing makes me feel good. Well, I think it's important, and I appreciate your work to translate the beauty of Nebraska onto a canvas. It's, it's Thank very you. very much appreciated. 
I, I, I think it's important for the young people to know, and, and, and so I do think this is, this is really an important thing to have happen here. I didn't even, wasn't aware of it until I entered this. And um, so I think this is important to emerging artists here. Happy to have it. Happy to live in Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Next under special presentations is the Lancaster County Juvenile Services Comprehensive Plan, July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2021. Sarah Hoyle, Human Services Director. Good morning. Our Juvenile Comprehensive Plan is something that's required in state statute every three years. It's in order for us to pull down our community aid funding that's appropriated through the Nebraska Legislature and administered through the Crime Commission. We receive a little short of a million dollars annually from that. Uh, but more importantly, even than a million dollars, is the way that the community pulls together to develop the comprehensive plan, and then the way that the comprehensive plan serves in our community as a guiding post as to how we want our juvenile services to be developed and how we want to serve those youth in our community. The planning process this year went pretty smoothly. We had about 35 people participate in the planning process. Commissioner Brinkman and Commissioner Amundsen, thank you for being part of that. I will tell you it involved three pretty long days, a lot of interactive surveys, different things online for the planning committee to do. But one of the things that we built in this year that was different than previous years is we went out into the community. We partnered with our stakeholders at our different community centers and we tried to engage families. We engaged youth and we engaged their parents. And specifically, we asked them four questions. We asked them, if your child were to get in trouble, if you or your child were to get in trouble at school, how would you want your child to be treated? What would you want that process to look like? We asked that the same question about what if you were to have an interaction with law enforcement? How would you want your child to be treated? Um, and then we also asked that too, of if you do enter the juvenile justice system, what would that process look like to you? How would that process be fair? And then the question that we asked that all of our agencies are still asking is, what is the primary need that you have right now in your family? We found that that need was something that maybe we didn't always ask families, and it's something that maybe was a big barrier as to helping those families achieve their goals. So for example, if we have a family who's trying to work on oh, different goals that we set, do 10 hours of community service, uh, facilitate or be a participant in a mediation, but the family doesn't have adequate housing. How can they, I mean, unless you have those basic needs in place, you can't really work on different things unless those basic needs are met. So that's something I think moving forward, uh, we definitely learned from this process. Um, the priorities that we have, the, the first one, ensure equitable treatment of our system involved youth. Second one, provide effective services and apply best practices to prevent youth from entering the juvenile justice system. Third one, facilitate respectful and accommodating treatment of all families and youth in the juvenile justice system. Ensure behavioral health services are accessible to all youth and their families. And then the last one, ensure all juvenile justice system stakeholders are using evidence-based principles to meet the needs of our youthful population. Any questions? Any questions for Ms. Hoyle? Commissioner Brinkman? I don't really have a question. I just wanted to comment that I thought that the this was my first time through the process and I thought it was really effective and knowing that we've engaged the community for the first time and those youth and their families I think is reflected in the goals that were set in the plan. I thought it was very interesting to note that as uh, the city and our school, Lincoln school system were talking about um, school resource officers and middle schools and safety issues that all of the topics that we talked about in our comprehensive plan working groups <coughs> came to the forefront and I was really reassured to know that we have a lot of systems in place it was very interesting to see members of the community testify at the city council and say I had no idea that the city and county were working on uh, disproportionate issues I had no idea that they had already identified these things especially uh, the discussion that we've had about an MOU to talk about what behaviors and issues that occur in school should be addressed by law enforcement or should be addressed by school staff and I know that was identified in one of the early meetings I attended and it's clear that those are issues that we still need to keep talking about um, 
Anyway, I wanted to commend you, Sarah, on your leadership on the project. You did a really nice job in those long meetings of making everybody feel like their voice was heard. And the plan itself, um, I read through it, and I think that it's very clear, and it gives us a good direction going forward. And I think if we are able to um, actually make progress in each of those areas, we're going to see great dividends for the community at large. So thanks for your work. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Amundsen. Well, I think that <clears throat> Commissioner Brickman actually really said everything. <laughs> but I did want to comment, though, too, that I was really impressed with your team. Your team did a really good job in coming together. They're very, very passionate about their, about their work. And I know that as far as the community is concerned, uh, the, the community of the uh, uh, nonprofits and so forth, they are dedicated to their work. And this is what is making a difference in Lincoln. You know, I asked the question on Friday. Uh, I said, what would happen? What would happen if we did not have these nonprofits working? And there was kind of a, they would be vastly different. And so the the uh, the cooperation, the passion, and so forth, is, is of your of the whole group is really amazing. And thank you for your leadership. Okay. Any other comments? I just want to thank the board again for their continued support of juvenile justice and for being leaders in not only the state but in the nation on what you've uh, supported and what you've put forth as far as our juvenile justice programming. Also, and both of you have already talked to this point, that this would not be possible without the work of our community at large. We have a wonderful community. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, seeing other questions, uh, Ms. Beatty, could you see the correlating item 4A, please? Under new business, item 4A is the Lancaster County Juvenile Services Comprehensive Plan for July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2021. Move approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, Juvenile Services Comprehensive Plan. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? <clears throat> yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Item 4B is a resolution in the matter of transferring appropriations from the general fund miscellaneous budget to various general fund agencies. The amount to be transferred is $707,406. All right, good morning. Dennis Meyer, Budget and Fiscal Officer. Um, first thing I need to do is just kind of correct that dollar amount that was read on the agenda. I had made an adjustment to the resolution. So when you look at the resolution itself, the total transfer is 748,406. So I had to make um, like a $31,000 um, adjustment uh, and I didn't get the agenda adjusted, but resolution's the correct number. When you take a look through here, I'll just kind of remind you for the most part why we make these additional appropriations. The way we set our budget process up is when we talk about cost of living and we talk about health insurance increases, we don't budget for those up front. So for the most part, you will see me here every year talking about additional appropriations because with those items, it will drive budgets that need to be um, transferred money over. So we set two million aside and this is kind of what we use it for. So when you take a look at it this year, we've got a couple larger ones along with some of the other departments that, um, you know, that are smaller, that just need a little bit to, to cover those cost of living raises. The couple large ones this year is the county attorneys and the district court. District court is, is really due to legal services, you know, payments out for um, attorneys. And the county attorney's office this year has an extremely large number due to uh, the, the change in the county attorney. So we had a couple long-term employees, the county attorney himself and his chief deputy both retired. And then we had some um, increased cost in, in autopsies throughout the fiscal year. So, so the, the total number is the 748. When you compare it to previous years, I think I was just looking a little bit ago, it is a little bit higher, but I think it's due to those couple retirements that I just talked about. Otherwise, we're, we're kind of right in the ballpark. I'll answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Mr. Meyer? Okay. I'd entertain a motion to approve the resolution. I move that we approve the resolution in the amount of $748,406. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second to transfer 748406 from general fund miscellaneous budget to various general fund agencies. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 4C is a resolution in the matter of adopting a policy governing the expenditure of public funds for payment of reimbursement of actual and necessary expenses incurred by county elected officials, appointed officials, employees, and volunteers. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second adopting the um, policies for expenditures for public funds. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 4D is a sales quotation from Sealer for annual technical support, software maintenance, and warranty for the county engineer's Trimble software and hardware. The cost to the county is $6,615. Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. So, Sealer equipment is where we buy our Trimble um, GPS and surveying equipment from. This is very specialized equipment with. Um, Specialized hardware and software to go with it. This is the annual agreement for this equipment. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the quotation from Sealer. Um, any discussion? I just have a question. Recommend? Sorry. So it's more just a process. This is a quotation. So what? What action are we taking here? We're taking action to have someone sign the last page that then results in a contract? Or I'm just trying to figure out what this, the, the paper that we were given, what that means. I, I believe that would be a legal question, Commissioner Brinkman. Okay. Yeah. Jen, you want to come up here, Jen? Um, Jen Holloway, County Attorney's Office. Um, yeah, you'll essentially be approving the, the purchase amount since it's over the 3,000 threshold. Um, so sometimes they come in the form of a quotation instead of an actual contract. So the future contract will be on our agenda later? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Me, I can double check. All right. Thanks. Okay, any other discussion? We want to wait for. I don't. I, it's not necessary to wait for that answer right now. I can. We can okay. figure it out later. Okay. Um, uh, please call the roll. Brinkman. Yes. Avery. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Item 4E is an agreement with the State of Nebraska Department of Transportation to establish the terms upon which the state will assist the county in obtaining federal approval and surface transportation program funds for certain county bridges. The county's share of the total project cost is estimated to be $414.37. The agreement is effective upon execution by the state. Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. So uh, as a county in Nebraska, we can request Department of Roads inspect our bridges where the abutments and the footings are underwater. We requested I believe about six bridges be inspected. The state goes out with a stick and they determine um, how deep the water is. They went out this spring when it was very dry and they said they would inspect one bridge for us. And so um, it's bridge B133. Uh, uh, B133 is located on Agnew Road east of Highway 77. And um, it, it looks like this most of the time. It's a little swampy around that bridge. <laughs> And we believe that it would be beneficial to have an underwater inspection to get a look at how, how that bridge abutment and footing look. All right, any questions for Ms. Stingman? Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agreement with the state of Nebraska, Department of Transportation, uh, for underwater inspections of county bridges. Any discussion? <coughs> uh, please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Item 4F, before I read the item, I will point out there was a slight typographical error. Uh, the word trail should have been train, and I will read it in its correct format. The item is a right of entry and maintenance agreement with Nebraska Game and Parks Commission for the removal and reinstallation of two drainage culverts in the wagon train state recreation area and wildlife management area. There is no cost to the county. 
Pamela Lancaster County Engineer. So this is a, as it says, right of entry and maintenance agreement. Um, we have several pipes kind of around the Wagon Train Lake area just uh, east of Hickman that uh, have eroded and need replacement this summer. And so this is a right of entry so that we can get in and redo that pipe, um, and, you know, in park grounds. So. Move approval. Second. Good. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agreement with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Any um, discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 4G are contracts with the following to provide business card and letterhead printing. Terms of the contracts are for one year from the date of execution with the option to renew for three additional one year terms. These are with Cornhusker State Industries in an amount not to exceed $4,000 and Fire Spring in an amount not to exceed $3,500. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve contracts um, with two providers for business card and letterhead printing. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Avery. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next are consent items. We have amendments to the following contracts for the annual services of tires, tubes, and tire repair services. The amendments add additional services per attachment A. The cost to the county will not increase due to the additional services. This is an amendment to contract C18-0105 with Cross Dillon Tire and contract C18-0106 with Heartland Tires and Treads. We also have right-of-way contracts with the following. Allen and Laurel Beatty at South 120th Street and Hickman Road in an amount of $307. Allen and Laurel Beatty, South 96th Street and Hickman Road in the amount of $559. Ron and Amber Knoll, South 96th Street and Hickman Road in the amount of $2,615. Utility permits with the following, number 1676, allowing Olson Associates to conduct soil borings at three different locations adjacent to 94th and A Streets. There's no cost to the county. Number 1674, allowing Century Link Communications to install underground fiber optic cable from the village of Roca adjacent to Roca Road to approximately South 64th Street. Again, there's no cost to the county. And number 1611, allowing the City of Lincoln to install new sanitary sewer off 120th and A Streets to approximately South 98th and Van Dorn Streets. Van Dorn Streets. There's no cost to the county. Receive and place on file the following reports for May 2018. We have the Assessor Register of Deeds and the Clerk of the District Court. Move approval of the consent items. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent items. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business not on the agenda may do so at this time. Okay. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on an item regarding county business that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, uh, please continue with the announcements. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold department budget hearings on Tuesday, June 12, 2018 at 9.30 a.m. or immediately following the Lancaster County Board of Equalization meeting in the Bill Luxford studio of the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a staff meeting, including department budget hearings, on Thursday, June 14, 2018, at 8.30 a.m. in the Bill Luxford studio of the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold its next regular meeting on Tuesday, June 19, 2018, at 9 a.m. in room 112 of the County City Building. County Commissioners can be reached at 402-441-7447 or commish at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live on Link TV City. For the rebroadcast schedule, visit lincoln.ne.gov. Meetings are also streamed live on Link TV and can be viewed on YouTube. I move we adjourn. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, please call the roll. Avery. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Wilchin. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay, that concludes the County Board of Commissioners meeting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the meeting for the Lancaster County Board of Equalization. Uh, please continue with the uh, agenda. 
A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk's staff at the front of the hearing room. These materials can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held on Tuesday, May 15th, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the last Board of Equalization meeting. Any discussion or correction? Okay, please call the roll. Avery. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. And Wilchin. Abstain. Motion carries three to zero with one abstention. I did neglect to mention that Scott Gaines with the County Assessor Register Deeds Office is also with us today. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Moving on to item number two is additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Move approval of the additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the additions and deductions from the tax assessment rolls. Um, any discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Item three is notice of taxable status for the city of Lincoln. Good morning, Scott Gaines, Deputy County Assessor, Registered Deeds. Uh, this is a vacant lot that the city has been leasing to the owners of O Street Carpet. It's a uh, just vacant lot for parking that's uh, just north of their business, uh, business. The lease was initiated in 2016. The city just recently made us aware of the lease or we just discovered the lease. Um, so this is to put them on notice that the property has not been used for a public purpose and will be taxed for 2016, 17, and 18. Okay, any questions for Mr. Gaines? Otherwise I entertain a motion to approve the notice. Move approval of the notice. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the notice of taxable status for the city of Lincoln. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. And Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next is public hearings. We have public hearing on motor vehicle tax exemption applications for the following, College View Academy, Indian Hills Community Church, People's City Mission, Radiant Church, Resources for Human Development, Second Baptist Church, Southern Heights Presbyterian Church, and St. John the Apostle School. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public hearing for the motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Um, anyone in the audience wishing to testify in support? Uh, in opposition or in a neutral capacity for these applications. Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing for the motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Item number five is action on motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Move approval of motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the motor vehicle tax exemption applications. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? <clears throat> yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries four to, four to zero. Next is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to County Board of Equalization business not on the agenda may do so at this time. Okay. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak about an item related to the County Board of Equalization but not on the agenda? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I, okay, <laughs> Commissioner Brinkman moved and Commissioner okay. Avery seconded the motion to adjourn. Uh, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. That concludes the Board of Equalization meeting. Um, have a good week.